Hey guys, Damon Driver here, and in this video we're going to sand down the wings of our 777-9X Emirates uh, right and left wings. We're going to sand them down, sand down the spackle, sand them smooth, and uh, that's what we're going to do in this video. So let's get started. Okay, here are our right and left wings for our Emirates 777-9X. The first thing you're going to need while you're doing this is some kind of dust mask. Uh, you don't need a full-blown respirator, just a dust mask. Um, any basic dust mask will do. And then what you need, then what you need are various sanding tools. Um, this is a handheld uh, sander, large sanding pad, handled. Uh, this is great for going across and getting a nice, flat, smooth surface once you use, and this is about a, uh, a 160 to a 180 grain sandpaper. Basically the science of sandpaper is the lower the number, the higher the, uh, the more, the, the coarser, the rougher the uh, sandpaper. This is about a 200. This is an 80. This is, this is probably more like a 160 to a 180. And this is a, this is an 80 grit sandpaper block. And hopefully you can see the difference. The granules or the uh, the coarse material that's on there is going to be coarser and larger on the lower numbers. So the lower your number, the more uh, the harder the sandpaper. Okay, the more aggressive and abrasive it is. The higher the number, the smoother the sandpaper. It's you know you you start low and you move high. That's how it works. The, the tough, coarse sandpaper takes the excess um, spackle off of the wing, and that's what we want to do. We want to start out and get, get the junk off, and then we go in with the higher number, finer, um, more sensitive sandpaper to give us a nice, smooth, even surface. So I put my dust mask on, and I start I start sanding. I got a couple of uh, fresh 80 grits. It's good to start with an 80. You don't want to start with a 60. A 60 is too low. Let me see if I can show you a 60. This would be 60 grit or a 50 grit. Can you see how see how it looks? See how see how coarse it is? How tough it is? This is going to pull out chunks of styrofoam out of there. So we can't go too low. Start at about an 80. So let's start at 80 and let's start sanding. The other thing is make sure you have your wing on a relatively flat surface. Which we have right now. So we go ahead and we just start sanding. As you're sanding, you're going to feel bumps and grooves. Take your hand and run it over the wing, run it over the airfoil. You're going to feel um, irregularities and discrepancies in the airfoil, and you have to determine where they are, and then you have to sand those out so that it's smooth from the leading edge to the trailing edge. It's one smooth fluid motion. You don't want ridges or bumps because that's just going to create drag. And you look to see where you have big ridges of, uh, of, 
you're going to have large ridges of spackle that's leftover residue and what needs to happen is you need to get rid of it there's some overrun which comes over the leading edge of the wing we're going to get rid of this leading edge anyway and replace it with a balsa leading edge anyway so we don't have to really worry that much about leading edge so I'm taking the 80 grit Very gently. Going up and down the up and down the airfoil, up and down the wing. And the name of the game is to get get this wing as smooth as possible. That's the name of the game. It's good to run this way, and then when you're, after you're done using the 80 grit, you come in, with, come in with this, with the bigger handheld handle block, come in and go this way, down the back end of the airfoil, because you start to get a nice flat smooth, but you have to maintain the curvature. If you look, you got the curvature of the airfoil, you have to maintain that. That has to stay there. You can't lose this curvature. You don't want to sand the wing flat. You don't want to sand this flat. You want to maintain the airfoil's curvature because it's the airflow over the top of the wing that creates the lift. It's the difference in air pressure between the lower portion of the airfoil and the upper portion and the low pressure area that it's created here that creates the wing that the wing lifts up into. So you have to maintain this curvature. It's all about distance of air molecules traveled. So this is going this takes a while you just got to keep sanding okay now I'm moving to the outer portion of the wing this is the inner portion engine goes here fuselage outer portion of the wing still using the 80 grit sand block Sure, again, make sure that you're doing this on a flat surface. It's crucial that you do this on a flat surface. The other thing is also is to check the trailing edge thickness we want to maintain a uniform, about a two millimeter, maybe a three millimeter leading edge, so it's a little high here. One of the handy things to have is just a compressed thing of uh, air, like a duster, a keyboard duster for a computer. And we dust off, dust off all the uh, excess excess residue and uh, spackle and foam, get that cleaned off, and then we go to the next stage. Next stage is we come in with our flat sanding uh, 
big sanding pad here or handled sanding pad and then we come in and this is going to get rid of any ridges any final bumps or ridges this is going to get rid of it Take your hand, I close my eyes and I take my hand and I run it down the wing. And if I feel any discrepancy, then I hit it with this. The only problem with using this is sometimes you get what I call uh, rollers. It's a piece of foam and spackle that rolls up and as you're doing this it rides in between the pad, the sanding block and the wing. Here, here's a roller right here. Perfect example. And what a roller does, see, it sticks in between the pad and the foam and it actually will make a ridge it'll make a scar so you gotta really watch that okay now that i've done that what i'm going to do next is i'm going to get a, a sanding a flexible sanding pad like this this is a flexible sanding pad it's flexible it's backed by foam so what I can then do, come in, and now I can contour the curvature of the airfoil. Here is a wing that hasn't been sanded yet. This wing has not been sanded. Okay, let's take a look at it. This wing has not yet been sanded. We got shade and sun here. All right, not been sanded. Okay. This wing has been sanded. Let's get some of the dust off of it. See the difference? Look how smooth that is. Look at, look, look at that surface. It's not 100% perfect. I'll add some little bit of spackle to any little ridges. See that ridge right in there? See that that see that pit right there? See that little pit there? There's a couple pits here, some here. I'll come in with a trowel and add a little bit of final spackle to that to cover those up. Because when I add the lamination epoxy for the 132nd balsa, I don't want those. Because that's going to be an area where the balsa won't stick. I don't want that. While I'm here with you guys, I want to test something out. Uh, a particular um, subscriber commenter on the last... Um, video on the last 777 build video when I spackled the wings came out rather strongly in opposition to 
um, this type of spackle, red double spackle, just, you know, that stuff is crap, it's garbage, it cracks, it's no good, don't use it, go do what this other guy's doing. I love constructive criticism, I love different points of view, you know, we learn and we grow by, you know, checking out different things, new ways, and learning new things, and I'm always learning new stuff, and that's what RC Hobby is all about. But uh, his claim was that the balsa would crack and fail if it flexes at all. As you know, all wings flex. Now, I am going to put carbon fiber rods underneath and inside this wing so that it will limit and give strength to the wing, but it will still flex. And then I'll laminate it and put 132nd balsa sheet. He knows this. Most of you other guys know that that's what I'm going to do with this wing. But there is dried spackle on the wing. So um, this particular individual's claim is that this spackle, this red devil spackle, will crack and fail. It'll just crack and then fall off the wing or something. That's possible. It's possible. But let's let's just have a look and let's let's flex the wing. Let's sh let's shake the wing. Shake the wing good. As much or if not more than it would encounter in flight. Alright. This area here of the foam is so thick and dense it won't flex, but this outer section flexes real good. Alright. Let's have a look at the spackle. Let's see if it cracked and failed and everything. All right, let's get you guys up close to the wing surface. Um, I'm not seeing any cracking. I'm not. I'm not seeing any cracking, and I'm not seeing any of the where the spackle's thick, where it's failed. Nowhere. Nowhere. into the light, into everything. No, no cracking of the spackle. Okay, well that, that answers that question. Um, not trying to seem obnoxious or rude or anything like that. Uh, the spackle didn't fail in flexing. So, and that's why I use Red Devil Lightweight Spackle. Um, DAP Spackle, D-A-P with polyester, will crack when you do this. And that's why I use the Red Devil Spackle. Habico Spackle, and the DAP, DAP, and some other products, they will actually, they will fail. Yeah, I mean, that's why I use this one-time Red Devil lightweight spackle. I use this because it doesn't crack when the wing flexes. Um, DAP with polyester. A lot of spackles are now using polyester, and that does crack. That will crack. If I bend it at all, crack, 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 and it might pop out, I won't use it. This has no polyester. I love it. You add polyester to this stuff, makes it heavier. The Habico version of this, heavier and way more expensive. Look, I've been using this stuff for over 10 years, maybe 15 years, and I'm going to be honest with you, it's really good. That's why I use it. If I find something in life that works well for me, I pass it on to you. That's what the RC hobby is about. My secrets become your secrets, and I hope it helps your scratch belt plane and your project. That's one smooth wing. <laughs> uh, looks good. Well, this is Demon Driver, and that's how you sand down spackled wing, sand it nice and smooth, and the next step we're going to laminate it and put the 132nd balls on. I have a whole other wing i got to sand. That's what happens, you got a right wing and a left wing, so you got to do this work again. What am I talking, I got, I got two others, I got to do this five more times.
Thank you for watching.